Kevin. Yeah. So I have a question for you. Yeah, shoot. Do we think that the world doesn't want to hear our fast food um, rankings because we are now shooting this video for the third time? I know. It's like they're out to get, they don't want us to get the word out. I was going to make all these jokes about, oh, you know, the first time around it was the joke, blah, blah, blah. No. Our opinions have just changed, damn it. Okay? They have. That's all it is. See, the world, <laughs> we're still going to get this video out, but it has just made me so cynical. And I'm like, yeah, it's a new list. Deal with it. It is. Deal with it. Yes. It's a redux. It's a redo. You know, we've talked about this before, jokingly with other rankums. Opinions change and whatnot, but I think out of every rankum I've done, this is the one that has changed. You know, my Kanye albums, not really different. You know, um, Radiohead albums, hasn't changed. Fast food restaurants, though, has changed quite a bit. We have excuses for what counts as fast food and what doesn't. So everything on our list, we're not even going to go into specifics. I'm only going to go into specifics about one of them. Every place on here is strictly fast food or you go in, you buy your food, you sit down. There's no waiters. There's no this. There's no that. Whatever. Mm -hmm. Our checklist is very that. short. Very yes. short criteria. Yes. Very short criteria. And then the final thing I want to bring up before I do forget about it is... I wanted to do a shout out to like um, dessert fast food. So like Dairy Queen, yes. I don't want to bring up like Dairy Queen's like extended menu of actual food. We're not well versed in that. So we're not talking about that, but like ice cream wise, like Menchie's, any of that. Um, shout out to you guys. Cause you know, you guys aren't necessarily like deserving to be on the list, but you deserve a shout out because you know, who the hell doesn't like ice cream? Well, and you know, like yeah. cookie fast food places, sweet fast food places, a lot of stuff like that. There's a lot of those places. So I thought it was a good sort of shout out to at least bring at the very beginning before we got into our list. Yes, absolutely. Um, All but right, yeah, but so let's, get into, let's get into our list, buddy. Let's go, <laughs> wait, yes, we're gonna get into our list fast. All right. Fast. Ooh. This joke is okay. still not old to me. It's not <laughs> <laughs> I've done this joke two times now. Oh, I wonder <laughs> who that could be. <laughs> it's Sonic, okay? I'm just a little hedgehog. No, there's no restaurant called Flashes or whatever, like the DC hero. It's Sonic. I went to it recently with my girlfriend, and they're just really good at, like, kind of simple fast food but like doing it in a weird way like they have obviously a lot of simple options but they have interesting ones you know like with their sides and stuff their drink game and their you know milkshake game and their ice cream game is really good too the whole experience of the whole you drive up push the button they walk out right. and bring your food that was something like you know young people when <laughs> sonic first became a thing they're like what is this like a Thing? What? And grandpa came along and I remember this back in 1955. <laughs> when every place <laughs> used to have that. And milkshakes were those... 15 cents a pop. Sonic uh, old man is... yelling at Cloud <laughs> joke. Yeah. Put that put that in here. Yeah. <laughs> Cut that in. Cut that in. But yeah, Sonic, I think, is a solid way to start the list. Again, I think Sonic is the best representation of what I thought out of the couple ones I wanted in at number 10. Um, but yeah, the little mm -hmm. blue running man little blue. has debuted. <laughs> little blue running man. Uh, I will make it. Yeah, I will make a note. Uh, well, a couple things. One, they do have some good commercials. Like they have yes. one for that like pretzel chili dog thing. They were really good yeah. at framing the food. And I looked at it. I'm like, oh man, I actually want to go to Sonic and like eat, buy and eat that. They yeah. had the most unique slushy thing. They do. It was either yeah. that or the way they cut their ice. Like the ice, it's like very. Oh, they're ice is, yeah, the oh. ice is weird. You know what? The <laughs> fact that you just said that, we are still finding new things to talk about in every one of these edits. Their <laughs> ice is unparalleled to everyone. That is, I'm so happy you just said that because that gave me something new to freaking say. Okay. <laughs> all right. Let's talk about Sonic ice. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I have to say. I just have to say it's unparalleled to any other ice. I love it. But it's it, so good. Oh, you love it. Okay. Oh, my God. Yeah. Or a bad way. Okay. So I will move into my number 10. And again, I say this, the number 10 is not the most hated spot. No. There is some disappointment that comes with number 10. But I still do like this place, which I'll get into really quickly. And number 10 is Subway. Subway is still, to me, the king of the sub fast food chains. Better than Jersey Mike's. Definitely better than the hack Jimmy John's. 
which I don't know why people are still going to Jimmy John's. The disappointment and why it's at number 10 comes from the fact that they removed my favorite uh, meat portion, which is they phased out roast beef, which again, I don't understand why you would do that because that's such a staple when it comes to meat subs. Like how can you be a sub place and not have a roast beef option? Like you got turkey, you got chicken. How do you leave that one out? That's like the holy trinity of meats. It is very strange. It is, yeah. That really took away a lot of respect I had for Subway because that was really the only thing I went for was a roast beef footlong. Now it's different. I mean, I kind of, I as a as a substitute, I went with the Philly cheesesteak, or at least the steak one. So I kind of do like mm -hmm. a, a steak thing, which it makes up for a lot of what's missing, but. You just can't, I can't stomach the fundamental thing that they got rid of roast beef. So Subway, uh, we're using our credibility here. We're using our food critic credibility here to tell you, bring it back. You guys are still good, but do better, okay? Do better, bring roast beef back. Make a, make a boy like me happy. Make that's my artery clogged heart happy again. I was going to say, that's a better tagline. So instead of Subway, eat fresh. Subway, do better. <laughs> Do better. Uh, yeah, and like, do, like saying it like that, like everything. Subway. Do better. Do better. We're going to move now into numbers 9 yeah. through 7. We have our pairs here. So, Brian, yes. if you'll take it away, what is your numbers 9 through 7? So, number 9, what's actually really wild about number 9 is your tagline for Subway is actually with my number 9. And my number 9 is a, as you college football fans love to talk about, it's a first seed upset. My number 9 was my number 1 in the last video, and that is Popeyes. Um, Popeyes. Do better. The last three or four experiences have been just very just, you know, we living in this world now, like you have to kind of give certain kinds of understandings about certain things and workers and stuff like that. We both understand like we I can tell when I'm like, you know what, you've been having a rough day or like I get it now. However, with the past couple times I've been the Popeyes. <laughs> I don't mm -hmm. know if I could use that mentality because all I can say is if anything can encapsulate Popeyes now is when I go there after an hour waiting for my food that should have taken maybe, maybe a little less than that. And then the manager walks out and his thing, Kevin's laughing because I've told this story twice but already. But it never gets old though. When, when he comes out to me and he, <laughs> he goes, hey, I'm really sorry about your weight. I put in one of our new pies in there to make up for it. And I'm like, oh, thank you. And I wasn't going to eat the pie or anything. And then I get home and there's not even an extra pie in the bag. And like, <laughs> I could just imagine him walking back into Popeye's looking and going, F are you kidding me? <laughs> like, I know, that just is the concept know. alone. How do you bungle the apology? How do you get that wrong? <laughs> That's when you know, like, that's oh. when you officially go, that's all you need to say. That's all I need to say about it being at number nine now. And that's been consistent. So, but again, food's still good, but come on, mm -hmm. Popeyes. We gotta, we gotta do better. Louisiana gotta fast, more like Louisiana slow, am I right? <laughs> at number eight? Yeah, okay. Um, well, I mean, there's a lot that could have been joked into that. So I just yeah. wanted to move on. Not number eight. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Tropical Smoothie Cafe. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> oh, God, I'm just losing it. Yeah, I mean, Tropical Smoothie Cafe, whenever I don't get a smoothie where they don't properly get the ginger all crushed up, and it's or it's a lot of ginger, and it burns my throat, they're wonderful. I love it. Like I said, I'm very simple there. I get a Jetty Punch, and it's that's usually my go-to, and it's really good. And I was going to ask what your favorite fruit flavor was, so it's Punch. My favorite, well, I love strawberry is my favorite fruit. So usually mm -hmm. the Jetty Punch is strawberry and banana, and that's all it is. And oh, usually, oh, okay. sometimes I get ginger because I'm, as you all know, be sleazy, rest in peace. Well, he's back from the dead now. Um, yes, he, he, he had st a stomach ulcer, which obviously mirrors my life. So I try and have <laughs> stuff that helps my stomach as much as I can. So ginger is something that's really good. Mm -hmm. Um. But yeah, like we, you know, one of the best parts we talked about is you get so much smoothie for like a pretty good price. I mean, it's not like cheap, but for the amount of like fruit you're getting and whatever additives in it, it's a really good deal. Um, I would I would put Smoothie King up here. My opinion on Smoothie King is I've had it once and it tastes too much like kind of like a fruit drink. 
-hmm. versus tropical smoothie tastes like a smoothie. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's like smoothie king tastes like you're getting like a cherry flavored like Coke or something. Yeah, it's Where too it has, liquidy. It, there's no solid. Yeah, it, there's no, it's more yeah. kind of like an icy sort of thing versus mm-hmm. I think tropical smoothie is more of like a real hearty smoothie. Well, their blender was broken, just like a certain restaurant's other uh, ice ice related machine keeps breaking. Uh, sorry, our ice cream machine broke. <laughs> you machine. know who you are. That's you a know meme. who you are. <laughs> That's a meme right Anyways. there. Okay, so, yes. Tropical Anyways. Smoothie Cafe, awesome. Mamma mia, what are you talking about, Kevin? That's my transition into number seven. <laughs> okay. Oh, God, this is wonderful. Little skeezers. Little to get a five dollar To get a $5 hot and sweaty or $6 extra most wettest pizza. I was wondering when you were going to break those out. You didn't break those out the first two times, and I wanted, I wanted to be like, Little skeezy. You know what? Maybe the plan was I was subconsciously not saying them until I knew it was the best. So now that means (laughs) this video will be perfect. It will. And this is, (laughs) you know what? (laughs) That's going to be a very blunt question. Uh, Is Mike Gillis still alive? (laughs) No, he's been dead for a while. Oh, he has? Okay. So this is is funny. And you want to know the irony? You want to know the weirdest irony? It was with, I think it was with my first ex. And we were getting buddies. We were picking up buddies in the pickup. Mm-hmm. And I looked up at the TV and Mike Illich died. And I was like, this is wild. This is, You okay. hear about the death of a pizza giant in another, another competing pizza place. Pizza place. <laughs> That's I like, like watching another place's commercials in the TV of another restaurant. Yeah. That was, it was wild. You know, hopefully Mike Illich is resting. You know, our the his tigers are... They're doing good this season, so hopefully... He's probably resting you know. artfully in peace, knowing that his legacy amounts to a hot and sweaty little skeezers. That's that's what his that's what his pizza empire is remembered as. Hey, so you he's know resting what? easy. But yeah, Little Caesars, it's my go-to sort of fast food pizza. I I know people have this whole mentality for Little Caesars. I still think, weirdly enough, it is the best fast food pizza you you're paying for what you're getting i think the crazy bread and italian cheese bread is still some of the best pizza bread Mm. like amongst all pizza chains whether it's fast food like pizza hut or like local here like buddies or something it's Mm -hmm. great like it's really good um but yeah and i'm a big fan of the deep dish myself more than the round um but no little caesars is good and yeah you get the whole thing of going there getting your little caesars going out and it's fast and quick and you know it's you know speaking of commercials they have they have some weird commercials little caesars they their commercials are odd um but yeah i've seen one or two number seven it's so far it is looking kind of similar to last year's video so Mm -hmm. i don't know kevin if you have anything different for your number nine through seven well it's funny that you bring that up because at number nine this is where again i'm not up on my football terminology but this is where the major upset happens so at number nine claiming the second lowest spot is the previously reviled chipotle chipotle is at number nine which that's i know that's crazy dude you you had a year you probably walked through the mountains to refine yourself and you learn i know through the valley of the shadow of devil yeah that's what that's quoting you that's me quoting him directly kevin thought chipotle was the devil so my number 10 is chipotle Mainly as an excuse for me to rip on Chipotle. Because I don't know girl, why the, the heck Chipotle girl. is this popular. Well, come to find out, you <laughs> took a meditative journey yeah. and you were awoken to the fact that Chipotle is not a secret front for the devil, just like Long John Silver's is not a front for marijuana. It is. I understood that reference. The reason I was so harsh on it before wasn't really because of the food, it was more of the atmosphere and what it represented. The whole, it appealed to hipsters and young, pretentious young people and that stuff really, <laughs> as a certain, as a certain famous cartoon dad says, really grinds my gears. So I felt I needed, to, <laughs> I felt I needed to make my displeasure known in the last video. But after going back again recently, in terms of how the food is, uh, cause normally really what I get there is I'm partial to the actual, like 
like the steak wraps or the wraps instead of the bowls. Um, what you get for what you pay for, it's pretty good. And portion size, I mean, as anyone knows, they're, they're big, like burrito wrap type things. And the steak wrap is the steak and rice wrap. It's really good. And what you get for what you buy, you are certainly going to leave Chipotle full. I will say that. So you're not, you're probably not going to want more by the end of it. Uh, which for me is good enough for any any food establishment. As long as I'm leaving full and not wanting more, it's it's pretty much close to being a win in my book. Chipotle gets its redemptive arc in our crazy Netflix original series and here. And guess right? what? Nothing else on this list gets a redemptive arc besides Chipotle. <laughs> yeah, it had to atone for its sins. What can I say? So, moving on from that, number eight for me. And this also remained the same, I believe, from the very first list. Mm -hmm. So, number eight is Jack in the Box. Now, again, there's really not much to go into food-wise... Because when you get down to it, I mean, they just follow the, the format of just another hamburger fast food place. I mean, again, they, they do stuff differently. Like, they have, like, melts. And I know they're doing stuff, like, they have, like, for dessert, they have, like, the little bunt cakes. They're doing, like, the mini tacos in the takeout container. Um, stuff I, I can't really attest to because I haven't tried it. But, I mean, of their main, like, burgers that I've tried, they're good for what... Again, they're good for what they are. But... If I had to pick between Jack in the Box and another fast food place, I would probably go to another fast food place because mostly what Jack in the Box exists for, at least for me. So every time, you know, they send out those coupons in the mail, I open my mailbox and I see a whole bunch of them for Jack in the Box. I basically have saved ones that I'm like, okay, I can use that one. I can use that one. And you're if I need guy, a quick pick me you up. You pull open the newspaper and you're like, sick. I Jack in the Box coupons. I can finally go <laughs> there. And your mom comes Christmas. Out, Kevin, what are you doing? I'm cutting Jack in the Box coupons. Leave me alone. <laughs> Trying to save money, mom. <laughs> your your whole wallet opens and it just explodes all, with Jack in the Box. All Jack in the Box coupons. coupons. <laughs> but I mean, regardless of that, in a way, they're like, McDonald's in the sense where it's like they're the dependable fast food like they're there when you need them and, you need places <laughs> and they just like exist that. no matter yes. what like yeah, yeah those are good because those are places where if you feel like you don't want anything else you need like a good two or three where you're like what's something that's good and solid but you know that like it's not a place you go to all the time so mm -hmm. like that's good to have someplace like Jack yeah. in the Box like theoretically in your back pocket with all your yeah ooh, oh i see what you did mr funny guy hey. anyways <laughs> okay so speaking about dependability uh number seven for me is the one the only the legendary taco bell Olay, live Olay. moss think outside the bun you're thinking outside the bun there you go uh, but any thinking outside the bun, there's no buns at Taco Bell. Yeah, I know. I don't know why they because it was think outside the bell. I think at one point, and then they went to think outside the bun. I'm like, what? The there's no bun. You don't use buns. So I don't know. Weird, weird advertising decision they made. But anyways, again, well, can Taco. I, can I? I just want to cut you off real yeah, quick because I, you knew I had to bring this up. You were talking about weird advertising. Can we just say the the craziest budgets go to Taco Bell commercials? Like where the f do they get like these Steven Spielberg level productions? <laughs> the very first Nacho Fries commercial with Josh Dumal before like they have the whole arc where he like gets killed and then he comes back in the apocalypse. Like he's a hidden soldier and he's like, we gotta start the Nacho Fries revolution. That first Nacho Fries commercial is legitimately one of my favorite fast food ads. <laughs> I think Taco Bell is one of those places that at least stands out to me even more than mcdonald's like they really hammer on the sponsorship stuff i think taco bell at least they're pretty big with like the gaming crowd because you always see yeah, like halo like promotions xbox promotions yeah. yes <laughs> so i think where they get most of their money is the fact that they go into like large gaming sponsorships the new favorite i discovered was the gordita crunch thing the giant like hexagonal thing you gotta eat with two hands that was actually a recent favorite because taco bell took wrong. some of your shit too right you were saying like subway it took one of your menu yes, things away no they had a thing called loaded grillers and they were like little little crunch wrap things and they had a nacho cheese loaded griller 
And that, again, because it was like their quote-unquote dollar menu item, and I used to get that a lot. And then when I went back to Taco Bell and I didn't see it on the menu, and I asked the, the lady at the register through the drive through thing, I'm like, hey, do you have any more of those? Like, no, I'm sorry. And I'm like, ah. And so I had to do some quick thinking because literally that's all I had in mind. I'm like, uh, okay, Gordita. <laughs> Uh, which was a good spur of the moment choice because I had it and I'm like, where has this been in my life? I'm glad I introduced myself to that. So that's probably become a new favorite. You can't you can't underestimate the Doritos hard shell tacos that they do. That yeah. is just when you talk about sponsorship and marketing, you know, deals. The ones they made with Doritos was fantastical. They are very generous with their sauce itch. There's really, I, you can't really, there's sauce distribution, let's just say. Distribution's a word that's come up so many times. Um, so anyways, yes, you do get, it's like when you ask for a little bit of so, sauce, I almost said sauce. <laughs> when you ask for like, maybe like, oh, I want like three or four packets of mild sauce. It doesn't matter. They just give a handful and pfft. You know, um, sauce packets are very important. Mm -hmm. I agree. So at number six, actually talking about sauce packets. This is something that I just thought up. It's a transition because this place uses the elite ketchup that's like barbecue sauce packets. Elite. The Heinz like rip open. Oh, yeah. Very elite. Yes. Um, is number six uh, uh, is Culver's. I was about to say why it's higher up before I said Culver's. <laughs> I was stuttering. Culver's. That's why. I was going to say the reason why it wasn't this high up before was because when I did it the last time, it was a last minute add on. It, it was, was something I felt like was better than my number 10. But now I can comfortably say, no, Culver's, I think in terms of this kind of fast food, like this specific kind of fast food, I think is the best. I don't know if it's like super fresh, the food that they made. Like I don't, it's not mm -hmm. something where it's like five guys where it's like right then and there, it's fresh. But it seems mm -hmm. like everything they make, it's like, maybe it's cause they're so busy all the time that they're just constantly making new stuff. Cause every time I've gone there, everything's been so fresh you know getting the ice cream and you know they it's so good we either just Culver's, locally sourced really... ingredients or they're not frozen overnight like most places are probably yeah maybe it is because i don't know what they do but every time i've gone there like even when i've gotten it and brought it home it's been like pretty fresh mm -hmm. so it just must be something where like they're cranking it out a certain amount or maybe the way it's heated i don't know all i know is that they're just really good in terms of customer service mm -hmm. and just the way they handle and just again the food's good and it's very expansive and great um but Absolutely. yeah but at number five we are expanding a little bit more this was a place i can't believe i never added on the list last year because mm -hmm. i like it a lot in my opinion it's the elite pizza place like this i know kevin has different opinions but that was a conversation we had off camera but right. it was a fun conversation nonetheless mm -hmm. <laughs> um but it's blaze pizza um, Blaze Pizza amongst Pyology, which is a place Kevin really likes, yes. and Mod, which is a place that Kevin and I don't like. <laughs> um, and it's basically, you know, it's the, the revolutionary new thing of like, how have we not had a pizza place that's like, kind of like a Subway DIY, make your own pizza. Mm -hmm. You get different kinds of crusts, you get, you know, different healthy options. There's different meats, veggies, all this stuff. Um, at Blaze, you can get a salad. I know you could probably get like salad and stuff like that at the other places. Yes, yeah, they offer salad. They have like the lemonade there. Sometimes I look forward to the lemonade there more than the food because I think that's my favorite lemonade at like a takeout place. Like it's so perfect and it's very strong and really tasty. Is it like in house um, made or is it like minute yes, made? Yes, so like or something. I'm trying to think. It, all of their stuff is in house. They have those weird contraptions where oh, it's it like, keeps frothing it. it yes. It keeps frothing up mm -hmm. in like, yeah, like it's one of those weird things. So it's really good. The only thing I am upset about is they changed their donuts, which were like little, like kind of like, I guess like maybe like little breadstick knots with a little cheese and pesto in them. They changed it to just kind of cheese bread, which is still really good. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, that was unique. It was different. Um, but no, I still really like the pizza. It's really good. It kind of became a go-to when COVID hit because it was fun to go pick it up because we could right. still pick it up. Yeah, and they got good deals and they are pretty well-priced and 
um, you know, for what you're getting. And yeah, Blaze Pizza is really good. And so I guess that is kind of my top pizza place because there's no more pizza places on here because those are really <laughs> the only kinds of places I can find. Oh, absolutely, um, yeah. But now number four is a place that actually is, um, oh, I was, I meant to say that all um, four of my top five are brand new. So Blaze is one of them. This one as well mm -hmm. is a place that used to be um, not fast food. It had a fast food component, but technically it was a sit down with a waiter, all that. And if it changes, maybe I'll do, we'll do a third part of this. Just on that but basis alone, right yeah. Now, <laughs> just on that basis alone. We're only going to do it for this place, and that is Steak and Shake. Oh, um, hallelujah. We're talking about coupons. Um, I don't know why this place offers coupons, because their food is so dirt cheap, and then you just get coupon books of like, ten dollars off five dollars off buy one get one and i'm like you're basically paying for like nothing at that point <laughs> um but their their menu is simple their fries are amazing i know kevin went on to talk about like the way that they're just so tiny they and you are. have to adjust how you eat them i'd eat them with a fork i had to get like five or ten of them on a fork and just Swirl it's like when you see the little like, pieces yeah. of corn, you're just supposed to eat them. But like, it's like from Big, the Tom Hanks movie, where he's eating them like this. It's the same thing. <laughs> oh, exactly. but I really like their onion rings. Exactly. I um, I'm a big fan of their onion rings. They're really good. I love their buffalo sauce. Again, the milkshake mm -hmm. part of it. Oh, we could go on wonderful. and on about how beautiful their milkshakes are. We really yes. could, we could really dissect. We them, we yeah. we talked so much about their milkshakes the past <laughs> couple times. All I know is if you have a steak and shake near you, because I know it's kind of a regional thing. It is more Midwest. There are some yeah. locations like Kevin said he has some by him. Um, go try it. Like I said, a lot of them, I think all of them now are they are doing old school car hop again. That's something they used to do back Ooh, in the day. Okay. Um, but the way we do it now is there's one. Well, two of them we go to, we just sit in the car. But there's one by a mall that Kevin lived closer to, but it's a mall I love to go to. Yes, it's called Great, Great Lakes, Lakes Crossing in Auburn Hill, near Auburn Hills, yes. Yes. Um, we usually just go pick it up and go to the food court, and we eat it, and then people are like, where'd you get steak and shake? I'm like, oh, it's just in the circle outside, mm -hmm. which led us to a conversation about how maybe they should just shut that down and just move it into the mall. Not even just I think shut it down, just have it as an extension. Yeah. Like, there's plenty of so. space in Great Lakes Crossing for them to open up a... Uh, another steak and shake and then keep the one in the circle and they can compete directly with Johnny Rockets because there's the Johnny Rockets in Great Lakes too oh my god Kevin you have not been to Great Lakes in a long time no. Johnny Rockets no. there anymore oh it's oh, been gone hurts. for like it's been gone for like a year it's called like famous hamburger now there's like a place locally I don't know if there's some anywhere else but there's a place there's a place called Famous Hamburgers, and that's what took its place. It's next to where the Peppa Pig store is. No. Yes, Peppa Pig. I had the so... Queen Peppa Pig gets her own store. Oh, Green that Lake hurts Park. me so much. I had so many good memories at that Johnny Rockets, dude. <laughs> oh, no. The moment you said that, I sat here like, yo, you have really not been to Great Lakes in a long time. Oh, God dang it. That is that is the saddest thing. I, you're right. I haven't been to Great Lakes in like seven years, man. That was the last time I was there. Oh my well, god! Okay. I knew they, I knew they, I knew they expanded, but to get rid of that. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. I won't. I won't lament. Well, okay. My my number six through four is done. I'm sorry that you're sad now. Can you not be too sad saying number six through four? I won't. I will. I will try to move on, but I just want to give a hearty rest in peace. To the Great the Lake, to the real. Great Lakes Crossing, Johnny Rockets, by the movie <laughs> theater there, buddy. You were you were there for long enough, and you have a special place in my memories. So, I just want to say, give a heartfelt tribute to that one location, that it held such an important place in my early life. I know I see you praying over there, Brian. Anyways, so number six through four, I'll try to get to these as quick as I can. So interesting thing about these three. Uh, the way they're lined up, so my name for 6 through 4 is Chicken Alley, because all of these yeah. restaurants deal in some way or another with chicken. So uh -huh. number 6, and I know you said you were afraid that this would be number 1. It's not number 1, but it has to be on here. So number 6 for me is the great Chick-fil-A, the popular country nationwide Chick-fil-A restaurant chain.
you know, now, I'm not even going to hate on it this time. I've already hated on it the past has, two times. I'll yeah. just give it the praise of waffle fries are the greatest fry cut ever. So I'll give them that. I won't even do my hate in this video. So there you go, Kevin. Well, you I've can already celebrate I've already... <laughs> with Chick Fil A with glee. <laughs> well, I've already he, I've already set up how much he doesn't like it. Uh, probably have a further discussion about why he doesn't like it. But I mean, again, but it's okay. I get, it's yeah, okay. again, I, I understand that they are. They are, uh, they're not a fast food chain without their criticisms. Uh, but just focusing on what you get there. Um, my favorite menu item is the spicy chicken sandwich. Uh, which is really, I mean, again, you go to any restaurant or any fast food place, and you see that just one menu item that you're like, I don't really need to go outside of this. Like, I can come here just for that. That is really what the spicy chicken sandwich is for me. And again, like he said, the waffle cut fries. I'm not normally a fan of waffle cut fries. I just like the normal, just the, the standard french fry kind of shape. But again, I mean, as long as they're crispy, they're good. And whatever they put in their Chick-fil-A sauce, like that thing just goes well with anything that you get from Chick-fil-A. The fries, the sandwiches, the whatever. So that's really the, the the major sauce that I get to add to the the spicy chicken sandwiches. And I usually get two of them too, because that's usually enough to fill me up. I like that they do give that sort of welcoming atmosphere where you can literally, you can just take your food, you can eat it, but like you don't have to like really leave once you, you're done. Especially for the, if you're with a friend, so. Those are some of the few reasons why I like Chick-fil-A. So in terms of like chicken sandwiches, Chick-fil-A for me is a great way to go. But at number five, if we're talking about all around chicken, that is the great, the legendary Kentucky Fried Chicken. Because how can you go wrong with the Colonel? I mean, the man created the legendary 11 herbs and spices that the world has the joy to share in today. How, how, you know, what, be what better gift could one man give to the world? You know what I'm saying? So, uh, if, if there's one thing I can say about Kentucky Fried Chicken that I'm really, like, up on is the way they bred their chicken. Their breading on their chicken is, there's no parallel. No other place breads their chicken as crispy as Kentucky Fried Chicken. That... It just, it's just another stratosphere. Like, I can't... For me, that's almost, like, half the reason for the visit. It's almost sometimes more than the chicken. I'd just, I'd wanna, rather like, just go just there... on the breading and just crunch on or it. Or just... Like, the chicken comes second to the breading. Yeah, or just go up to the thing, like, forget the chicken. You just give me, like, a big KFC bit of just chicken skins or just breading skins. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah. And another thing I do like to mention about that kind of place is... KFC is the only fast food place where the sides that you get with your meal really measure up to the main course. Because I know we've been talking about, you know, like fries and other sides and stuff, which are like, yeah. you kind of take those for granted because you expect those to be part of what you're buying if you go to like a hamburger fast food place. But with KFC and... I'm actually, I'm, I'm getting hungry thinking about this right now. But <laughs> everything I got, like the mac and cheese, the butter biscuit. And like we were talking earlier, like the, the mashed potatoes and gravy. Like, I don't know. I don't know what they do with it. I was like, I don't know if they just hold it up to the sky and then they just have God breathe on it or something. Like, I, it, it's, it's magical. And they're like one of the few places that really get mashed potatoes and gravy right outside of like a barbecue or a southern place. Like KFC does mashed potatoes and gravy right, man. I, I, the, you, you can't you can't understate that for what it is and what you get in terms of a combo. No one does chicken like Kentucky Fried Chicken. It is, as the tagline goes, finger licking good. So that that is the high. Oh, that's finger sucking good. Um, <laughs> number I four. Was too much about <laughs> when we brought this up the last time. That's what all I was thinking. Well, of. we're not gonna tell them what happened last time. But moving on, number four, and this I have you to thank for introducing this. Yes, number four is the great raising canes. So I had the opportunity to try this, I believe, a year or so ago, because they built a Raising Cane's, uh, I'd say like five, six minutes away from me. 
Now, in terms of that location, it's not the best, like, logistic-wise. It is kind of at an awkward position. It is at the corner of an intersection and close to a freeway on an off-ramp. And so in terms of, like, trying to maintain, like, traffic going through the drive through of that Raising Canes, it's a literal nightmare because it will literally stretch out into the road. It's but so good. It is so good. So I can understand why there's a traffic backup because the food justifies the wait time. Their chicken tender combo is probably my favorite, what you get with it. Uh, so I, I believe that I get like the four chicken tenders and they're big too, they're not like little tiny ones. So you get a lot with the chicken. Uh, again, like the crispy factor, they are really good at breading their chicken tenders. I will give them that. That's also, that's a win in my book for them. Like you get like the, like the Texas toast garlic bread thing. Uh, and you were mentioning that Jade gets it, like, butter on both sides. So that was, I'm, I'm going to remember that for next time. Just to remember that. A secret menu yes, thing. the secret <laughs> menu thing. The sauce that they use for the dipping, for anything. Again, it's like the Chick-fil-A sauce earlier. The sauce that they use, it goes well with the chicken tenders. It goes well for the Texas toast. I don't know exactly what it is. I think you also mentioned earlier before that Jade made a variation of that sauce, too. For you she guys, did, she, yes. she made it out of whatever the ingredients were. Um, so, again, like that part's good. Again, because you get fries with it. The fries have kind of been a hit and a miss. I think the last time I went there, they were a little on the soggy or chewier side. But again, you're not going to, you're not going to Raising Cane's for the fries. You're going for the whole ensemble. And the whole ensemble really delivers. So... In terms, in terms of those three, Raising Cane's at number four is the king of Chicken Alley. So as much as I love KFC, I, I really just had to put Raising Cane's above that point. Well, you know, that's a very smart list. Um, very smart list. Um, I think we should just keep talking about Cane's and just praising it because okay. going into my top three, my number three is Raising Cane. Mm, who saw um, that coming? <laughs> again, I don't think this should be number one, at least for now for me because of the fact that they are sucking so much of not putting one in Michigan. The closest one we have now is their opening one by Cedar Point. Ooh, that's a So drive. that's the closest one to me. So, so I'm surprised the franchise absolute... isn't that big in Michigan. That's shocking. Yeah, it's, you know, you would think, you know, I have a, you know, my, my girlfriend is a Southerner. Her, the, the owner of it went to LSU like she did. And that was like his senior class project or whatever. And look at it now. It's humongous. Um, so Whoa, okay, you know, hold on. I got to know more about that. What do you mean his the thesis project? Like, like he so made a business I, plan for... To, okay, so here's the thing. So I can't speak specifically, which I, I'm mad I don't have the more information. But I think what it was is she told me... He had a class, okay. so either like a marketing class or something, or business and related, he had yeah. the whole, or a business related class. And he had the whole idea of raising canes and like how he was going to do it, what it was going to be involved in. And then wow. he left LSU, and then it became a thing. And it's That's you know such huge a, now. You know, the, these so. are the kind of stories that we. It's great that we highlight in this format here. That is yes. so. Fa it's literally like the Apple or Facebook of fast food because <laughs> just For just real. like jobs like, and just yeah. like zuckerberg the guy drops out before he finishes graduating because he has a million dollar idea that he turns into a million dollar franchise you brought up a good point which i actually think is a little wrong which is i when jade and i are kind of like we're more excited about the sides than the chicken sometimes you know you're doing something right like their chicken <laughs> is good but like they're simple. Everything about them is just so good. You know, again, I don't want to get too much into everything because I feel like a lot of it is repeating. But I think the one other thing we talked about a bunch is the benefits yes. for part time and full time workers. Like shout out to Raising Canes for being a place that like, you know, you go like you can kind of tell like we talk about workers and the way the environment is. Yeah. When I go to Raising Canes, I can kind of tell they're being treated good because <laughs> They, I've never been to a Raisin Cane's where they've been anything less than really good. That's and now so granted, important. I've only been to Cane's two or three times, but they've always been super friendly and super nice. So, And that's a reflection yeah. of the work environment. Like you keep your workers happy, they're going to they're gonna yeah. extend that to your consumers. So, Like we've been kind of repeating a few times that makes or breaks an experience in like us working in that field. 
you know, it changes it. And yeah, it definitely heightens it in a good way, which is a really good example of our transition for the most part. Obviously we've sort of ironed out some of the details with it, but my new number two is Mission Barbecue. Um, yes. This is this is a this is a country wide chain. Excuse me. Um, I know I learned there's none by Kevin, so I actually would love to take him when he's That's here. A shame, but um, Mission Barbecue is just a really big place that is involved in the veterans. So like you know, we are talking about like fire department and obviously just kind of like you know like outside of that, but mainly kind of like the military and all that sort of stuff. They're really good on honoring them because I believe the guy who created it is an ex vet. Um, the staff it's are mostly a veterans barbecue. too, correct? Yeah, yes. a lot of them are veterans. Um, they're basically, it's just a barbecue place. Really good. It's food that, you know, everything is fresh. Everything is kept steaming. It's, you know, you're not waiting like 40 minutes, obviously, for barbecue. Right. Everything is really top notch. Your tables have um, six barbecue sauces you can go through. There's some sweet, some hot, some normal. I get a different one that's not in there. It's called like a Baja something, right. which is like kind of a spicy one, which is really good. I wish they just came up with an eight sauce so they can just put all eight of them <laughs> together. Yeah. They have like a drink cup that you can buy, which is like an extra dollar. And it's a whole like, you know, oh, it's a support, you know, that's troops, all that yeah, sort of stuff, right? Away, but yeah. like I learned from my girlfriend actually jade was looking into vets that have gone there and they've been mad because they learn that they have no veteran discount which is kind of weird to me yeah. and like like it's you know you brought it up best i don't necessarily think it's a situation where if it's done in a way where it's purposeful i don't think it's in a gross way it's just more of kind of goofy to me where it's like how how can you have like such a big talk? And then when it's just a little thing as like a 10% off, 15% off, like, oh, thanks for serving our country. And then they're like, hey, do you guys have a vets discount? And they're like, oh no, we don't. Yeah. It's like weird. Yeah. I guess to me, it just comes across as kind of like a weird, like, hmm, okay. It's not non-fixable. I'm sure if they were like, oh, yeah. let's reverse that. Let's include a veterans discount. That's so simple to implement across franchises now. And But at number one, All right is you know i i still am gonna do this because now that kevin knows the context oh, oh. um that's my rick ross impression <laughs> um because he is the owner of how, what kind of chain kevin what kind of chain wings wing chain w what kind of wing chain oh you What's want the name to of say it? the name a oh, wing stop yes it yes. is wing stop see i thought it was a cool alley-oop there Basically, what I want to start off by saying is, and the first time was different, second time, I'm going to mirror the second time I said it, mm -hmm. Buffalo Wild Wings is not bad. I do think they're good. I just think they're way overpriced, and I think some of their, the things that they have in terms of sides and whatnot are not nearly as good as Wingstop. Wingstop right. kind of reminds me of Kane's a little bit. They're not super simple, but they're simple enough. The prices are really good. They don't have an abundance of everything. They have a decent amount of sides, decent amount of sauces. Um, when we get ours, I'm more of a flat wing guy myself. It's you pay like 20, 30 cents extra, but you can choose to be like, I only want flats or drumsticks or a mix of both. Cause I like the flats the most, but they had original hot sauce. I get my fries, extra seasoning and extra well done. Cause one, I think I don't like my fries well done, but they do them perfectly because nice. number two, like a place in Michigan called Hopcat, they used to have these things. They still do. They're called crack fries. And even though I find it ironic that they sell hundreds of beer and alcohol, they decided that crack was insensitive, even though they serve all kinds of alcohol, which is confusing. So they're called Cosmic Fries now. But <laughs> I think these are the real crack fries. I don't know what is in that seasoning, but the salt and the seasoning together is just so good. The rolls are good. One of the things I was telling Kevin is, I try to get Wingstop when I'm here at, which is I guess technically my parents' house now, cause there's one literally five minutes away. So by the time we're home, it is hot and fresh. When everything is in the bag, they don't cover it all besides the wings. Everything is in like an open, like little container and it's fresh the whole time. So it's not the heat is like trapping on the food when you're starving. And yes, when you're starving, you're probably hungry for anything, right? But when you're starving and you want like your number one favorite place and you bring it home and you bring it home from where I live, mainly going to live and the location's like 20 minutes or so away, 20, 25 minutes. Mm -hmm. 
when you get home and the food is not that warm and you start eating it and the first thing you say is this would not be as good if I wasn't this hungry but it's so good then you know your food is really good so like on a on a on a bad day where I'm starving it is so good if it's lukewarm or cold but I mostly want to try and get it when it's not because it is so good when it's warm. Oh yeah, so. it takes all your it takes all your problems away. That was a great list. Thank you for sharing that with the rest of us, and I'm sure there are going to be there some was, viewers. I don't who know if you heard list. there was fireworks that randomly gone off because they're celebrating how good my list is. All right, top three. Before I say it, I'll get into some context. So when we were talking about the pizza places before, Brian mentioned Pile G Pizzeria. That was originally number three, and. Yes. I, I swapped it out with what will eventually be revealed as number three. That doesn't mean, however, that Pyology has fallen from my heart. In terms of as much as I love it as a place, I, I, I love it so much. But after going with the option I had before <laughs> changing it again, uh, I just, after having it recently, I realized just how great it was after just ruminating on the taste. And number three is the great carl's jr so when it comes to like burger fast food places i think carl's jr is, is really in a class of its own and it's really the way they make it because they advertise themselves as being char broiled burgers now i don't know what exactly goes into that process or what makes a char broiled anything so don't ask me to get into the science of it because i couldn't tell you even if i wanted to but what I do know is that the result of the char broiled process really produces a juicier, more well-rounded out burger that you really just can't get at a place like McDonald's where like the assembly line efficiency kind of takes precedent over the ensuring the freshness of their ingredients. Or if I go to like Carl's Jr., like I know I'm getting... I know I'm getting a fast food burger, but I'm getting a quality fast food burger. And they're also, they're big thing, they're, they're big things too. They're probably like in between the third pound and half pound hamburger. It's for me, like a burger size judges on how I have to hold it. Most burgers are like, it's a one-hander and you hold it with one hand and eat it. Carl's Jr. It's like, I, I need to employ both hands. <laughs> Another thing that they do well is our milkshakes. Now again, they're not steak and shake milkshakes because nothing equates to steak and shake milkshakes even our dearly departed johnny rockets but um, <laughs> uh, but uh in terms of just in, in a fast food like drive through setting like that kind of context they have the best milkshakes in the game my favorite is they have a cookies and cream one so they basically just use like really thick milk to help make the base of it and then they just blend a bunch of chocolate and some oreo pieces in it and the whenever i would i feel like the gumption to get it i ask them like oh can you put like extra oreos in it and they're really happy to oblige so i like the part that like i'm drinking it like i'm also drinking it but i'm also kind of like munching on the cookie part too so it's um carl's jr's milkshakes brings the boy to the yard so and dang right it's better than yours <laughs> now anyways Number two, we're going to kind of narrow our focus. So we're going in towards a more local name. And number two is a nice, yes, yes, just like how he did. It's very narrow. I hit my We're right going one. deep cuts here. Deep cuts, deep into the community. So number two is a place called The Hat. And it's hat like you wear on your head. And I think part of the logo actually includes a chef's hat as part of their branding. Th this was kind of hyped up for me by uh, some friends that I made here when they were telling me about this place. They spoke of it in almost mythic proportions, especially in terms of the portions that they give you. And so by the time I first decided like I was gonna go there, like I already had all of the stuff I was expecting. And so I remember walking in to the one that's near me. The first thing I remembered was like, oh, this is just like, a, this is like an A&W. It is very A&W-like in terms of like it's environment the sort of greasy spoon chili cheeseburger kind of deal they got going on there and they got a whole bunch of like options you can get what they're best known for is what they call the pastrami burger so it's basically them just taking a chili cheeseburger and putting pastrami on it so it's just three times the meat three times the mess three times the artery clogging goodness that whole deal and the fact that you do leave like full and satisfied 
and then some. Uh, to me, that's that's the hallmark of a good place like this. Like, I really love those kinds of places that you find that they may not be nationally known, they may not be world renowned, but they don't have to have that kind of reputation to really square up with the more national chains. Because in some respects, the hat does things better than even the best, even better than A&W, as much as I love A&W. Really, the only thing that they have going for them is the root beer, like the tap root beer that you get from A&W. Other than that, I mean, yeah, like the chili cheeseburgers and the chili dogs, but like they're good, but they're not like right home good. This, this place, the one I'm talking about now, does it extremely better. If anyone watching this is in the Orange County, LA Valley area, and you haven't been to the hat before, get your tukus in your car, putz on over there, and discover the magic, my friends, because you're not gonna regret the money you spend there. And it is, it's affordable too. It's not like it's, you know, $20 a meal or something. And now, with that being said, like you said last time, as Wingstop will be the unchanging reigning king of your list, the same goes for me. So at number one, in the tried and true spot, we have another legendary California classic. Number one is In and Out Burger. In and Out Burger, okay? In and Out Burger is number one. Again, a major regional icon. This is a California classic. It's a California staple. It embodies everything great about the southern section of the state. There are so many hamburger fast food joints, but despite that they each do their take on the hamburger differently where you just it's synonymous with that place uh in and out definitely is one of those places where they take the concept of the hamburger and they really make it their own so when you're going there like you know what kind of you know what kind of burger you're getting uh they're also very generous with how you how you stack it up like they have like you know they're normal like you have a single one a single cheeseburger a double hamburger a double cheeseburger and the height, the highest you can go is you get four patties and four pieces of cheese stack. They call it the four by four. And the fries are really good, and I have to specifically ask to get them made a certain way, which again, apparently in and out has all these sort of like secret menu asks. One of them is you can have them like extra cook the fries so they're extra crispy. And so I make sure to do that every time because I know that there's a lot of criticism about their fries kind of being either too salty or too flimsy or da 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 da. It's just a combination of two things. Which one is the actual food that you get, and two, it's sort of the branding slash regional identity, which plays into the experience of not only eating the food but going to the restaurants, going with a friend. You know, the inside decor is iconic in its own way. It's also quite ironically well not ironically but surprisingly it's also a pretty uh good hangout for young people too <laughs> especially the one on campus like everyone goes to the in and on campus all the college students all the quote-unquote young people hang out there just like they do at the chick-fil-a and the greasers, and the greasers. There. yes just like oh greece the movie Gre i'm like what is the what was that i forgot what that movie was called again <laughs> Yes. It's in the name that I told you, the Greasers. Grease. Or you You're the could, one you that could I say want. the Outsiders, too. Ooh, 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 ooh. I guess so. Yes. Stay gold, in and out Stay, stay, stay gold. gold. So, without really much fanfare, that concludes my top ten fast food joints. I hope you all had a lot of bun today. And um, we'll see you guys on Friday. No, you guys won't see us on Friday. We're not putting a video up on Friday. I just had to do the puns. Leave me alone. He got to say the emotional stuff. I get to say the dumb shit. Okay, bye, everyone. Apt pupil. All right. Catch you guys.